Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Jester Average YouTube from the Global SMP Season 5 server. And in the last episode, we built up this room with our secret magic entrance, which... Magic. And then, whoop, into what will end up being some kind of magic clubhouse or something along those lines. But I have yet to complete it because, let's be honest... I don't really talk to other wizards that often, so I don't know what other wizards really like in their magic clubhouses, so... You know, maybe I should build like an empty room and get some other people to furnish it? But, if I'm going to be completely honest here, I think I know why nobody's shown up. It's because there are no other wizards. It's because I'm all alone. It's, I, I've, I've waited over a week since sending that message in Discord chat asking if there are any wizards, and... At, Radio silence. So there are three things I can think of that would make people not respond. One, simple. They just, there are no wizards, right? That's the simplest, easiest answer, and oftentimes the simplest answer is right. The next one is that they're shy to come out for one reason or another. I don't know. Maybe they're afraid I'll do some experiments on their powers? As stated, I don't know. I'm not them. And third, and also quite possible, is because their magic was taken from them, just like it was from me, then maybe they don't really consider themselves wizards anymore because they can barely cast a fire spell. Whichever one of these is true, I've concluded that basically I am alone and have to learn how to fix magic all by myself. And so, I think we need to turn this, rather from a magic clubhouse, into a secret entrance down into the stronghold because that seems to have a lot of hidden knowledge and I think maybe we should look over some of the books and see if I missed anything while I was in the stronghold. So after around 20 minutes of building, we've got a nice little cozy nook here behind the bookshelves that feels like a dingy dark secret passageway. Now I'm not 100% sure if everything is spawn proof, but I sure as hell hope it is. So, did, did I- oh, I broke the nether wart. Down here at the very bottom of the staircase, we have a small room with some rafters, which leads to our magic portal. And what is the basement of a wizard, slash scientist, slash corporate office manager's basement without a portal to hell itself? Probably. You know, it's a portal to the end, which is a barren wasteland of endless emptiness and sadness and broken dreams, just like The Office. But enough being sad over dumb ideas such as, hey, free will isn't actually real and we can't have true autonomy because our emotions will always stand in the way and, you know, stuff like that because we have an actual problem at hand that needs solving. I mean, I have been basically living without magic for like an entire week now, right? It has been the worst experience of my life. Let me show you a highlight reel of all of the horrible things that have happened to me. This is probably the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone ever. This YouTube video is so boring. It's just some random kid on the internet complaining about not having Minecraft powers which aren't even real and are just actually roleplay. And I can't click off the video because my keyboard is too far away. This is just another example of how my life has been ruined by not being able to do magic. Look at this. Magic. Magic. Nothing's happening. Since I'm getting old, I decided to take ownership of my own dinner tonight instead of ordering pizza for the sixth time this week, and I'm going to cook something myself. So, let's make a delicious microwave burger. All we're gonna need is some slime balls, some rotten flesh, a singular apple, and some warped roots. And with a touch of magic, we should get one delicious burger. So, magic! Oh. Yeah, I forgot about that. The whole... I can't... Ugh. I'm just gonna order a pizza. By the power vested in me, I hereby command this bucket of milk to become a bucket of ice cream. Dude, become a bucket of ice cream. Come on, I need a snack so I can binge wash the housewives. I wonder what they're up to right now. But look, I can't catch up with them until I have my little ice cream snack and you currently aren't helping. And then I never did. I, I never caught up with the housewives. It's, it's actually a tragedy. 
This is what I mean by my life has become a complete disaster because I can't use any magic. So I'm done waiting around for other people to help me out because let's face it, we're never going to get help from other people. Other people are unreliable and untrustworthy, and this is only proven to my complex that if you want something done right, you do it yourself and you can never rely on other people because I'm the best and everybody else sucks. I mean, think about it. I wouldn't have a superiority complex if I wasn't superior. Like, why would I feel superior if I wasn't superior? Something I do know about is the magical power of crystals. When crystals form, they trap primordial magical energy inside of them. When we release that energy, we're able to harness it to use our own magic. So, using crystals is definitely a way to power magic, even during the daytime. Allow me to use this crystal in order to cast a spell right now, and show you just how devastating the effects of using one of these can be. So, just place it down, and then, boom. This is just the power using one small crystal. But, if we were to pick this back up again, let's hope it doesn't burn, got smaller. The crystal itself shrunk because parts of the crystal were destroyed and harnessed in order to use the magic. Using these crystals isn't necessarily the most effective way, as you start to deplete your magical resources very quickly if you use magic all willy-nilly, so you kinda have to be careful what kind of spells you're casting. But since I have my fair share of magical crystals anyway, I might as well show you that I can even use these- oh. There we go. Little bit of a rough takeoff there, but we've made it all the way back to the base, where we can now take a look at the crystal which has deplenished in size significantly from its original slightly larger size. Now, it didn't decrease that much in size because flying home versus summoning a huge line of fire are two completely different things. But that's the basics of crystal magic out of the way. Now, I need to find a way to effectively get a large amount of crystals, store them, and then find a way to sync my magic up to them like a magic, like a remote magical battery. Because taking out small amounts of crystals doesn't necessarily work for me because I have a habit of just going all willy-nilly with my powers all over the place everywhere. And if I run out of crystals, then I don't have enough magic for the return trip home when I try and fly my way back. So, it'd be nice to have a remote battery that's just absolutely massive. Probably won't run out of crystals, because as long as I keep it topped off, I should probably be fine. But the only way I can think of to make a remote battery is here in the end. Because as we already know, Dragon's Fire was the primary source of power for a very long time, and you can reach pretty much any point in the overworld, or even the nether, by using this here ender portal right here in the middle, right? And so, my question becomes, can we then use this end portal to send magic from crystals around the overworld? Then if we have a giant amount of crystals in some sort of storage tank or something, we can then mechanically send the crystals through the end gateway here, and they can go to the overworld, or at least the magical extract from them can, and then that can reach me wherever I happen to be in the overworld or nether. I'm not sure how helpful it'll be in the end, though. That's, uh... A question for another day, but I mean, considering how much time I actually spend here effectively, it's not that much time, so I don't really care. At the point that I'm exploring the end, I might as well just grab some of the crystals from the giant crystal tank I'm gonna make and hope it works out. So after spending a few hours grinding up a couple shulker boxes full of all the materials and all of the crystals we'll need to power this, I think we are ready to start building.
And so, after a long and grindy time lapse, I have indeed finished building the Amethyst Reactor. With a lovely little handle that you can spin around and unlock it, hinges on the side of the roof, and down here is what really matters. So it's about half full right now, just under half full on the Amethyst, but that should last us like a few weeks at least, if not longer, so long as we're a little bit sparing with our magic. If we go crazy here and there all the time, then it's going to be a problem, but generally, all right, if I'm just flying around casting a spell every couple hours or so, then I should be, hey, back off. Anyway, as I was saying, if I'm just walking around casting a spell every few hours, then it probably will last us for a very long time, which is pretty much ideal. Even though this isn't necessarily a renewable resource because, you know, I have to go mine amethyst out of the ground and amethyst takes quite a long time to form naturally and chemically, right? So, you know, it's not necessarily completely renewable, but I don't really care because it's a good temporary fix right now while I try and find a way to, you know, permanently fix my magic so I get to be lazy again. Magic is all about laziness, seriously. Just magicking your way out of situations so you don't have to deal with the actual problem at hand is what I do best. When I have to actually deal with the problem, that's when I do worst. Now that I've built the machine, I need to display just how powerful it can be. So I've invited one of my friends, Alpha Wolf Dog, over to the lab. Alpha Wolf Dog, resident member of the server. So, feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. Come on, Alpha Wolf Dog, turn tiny time. And there you have it, folks, a simple shrink spell. <laughs> yep, I can now cast more complicated spells in broad daylight due to the fact that I'm hooked up to that beautiful amethyst machine. Look at him, he's so cute and tiny. <laughs> uh, I love being able to do magic. Uh, shrunk him right down. <laughs> but that was a pretty good show of force, and this is a pretty complicated spell, so the fact that I can shrink down Alpha Wolf Dog and carry him in my hand... This is great! I should I should cause more mayhem on the server. But the mischief may have to wait for later. As they say, there's a time for work and there's a time for mischief. Something about a work-life balance or whatever. And as it turns out, I am officially down to my last pork chop. I am now officially out of pork chops. What I was thinking is maybe we could build a chicken farm. An automatic chicken farm, because as we all know, I'm a lazy gesture. I'm very lazy. And so what I'm thinking is just like if I build this automatic chicken farm, so long as I have these chunks loaded, it will automatically just produce tons and tons of chicken for me no matter what. So I have built the automatic chicken farm and I've spent the past few IRL days just breeding up chickens because Let's face it, I needed a break from all the heavy building stuff, and I just needed to sit back, watch some TV, relax, do some homework, and breed some chickens. And we so far have a grand total of... Three. Three cooked chickens. But, something I did want to mention is, our little alpha wolf dog here, he hasn't grown up yet, he's still tiny. I kind of feel a little bad about shrinking him down, and... The fact that I haven't figured out how to grow him back up to his regular size. So, hopefully I can figure that out in the next episode. Realistically, right, it's not really my problem. But on some level, it is my problem. And I should probably be taking responsibility for my actions. Am I feeling okay? That's not something I normally do. But, whatever it is, don't worry little buddy. You're going to be safely in my offhand until I find a way to grow you back to your normal size. But something I did end up wanting to check up on is how our magical amethyst reactor is going. I need to check if we need to top it off, if everything's working, if everything's, you know, functioning properly, if it needs any repairs, that sort of thing. So far, my magic's been working perfectly fine. I can fly, all that great stuff. So I'm going to go check it. So let's just uh, take a quick little look at it. Right on, no, whoa. I did not expect to go through the amethyst supplies that quickly. That is definitely not normal. 
I have no idea how it went from being way up there at the third block on the second layer to being all the way at the third block on the first layer. That is just unrealistic and weird. Odd to say the least, and very concerning at most because I'm gonna need to find more amethyst to fill this thing up. A lot of people use dragon power from the end, right? It's sent out through a series of ley lines and people tap into that in order to fuel their magic. So it only tracks that the same thing would be happening here because let's face it, this machine is sending out the magical energy from the amethyst into ley lines and I'm taking the magic out of there. But other people could be doing the exact same thing and just sucking free magic off of here. This is basically just completely a lost cause. That's about it. Of course, we can keep the machine all stocked up on Amethyst, but that's going to get very expensive very quickly, and all of that magic is going to be shared with a bunch of different wizards, and I don't like sharing. I don't. I'd rather keep all the magic for myself, and I mean, I'm the one funding the machine, so it only tracks that I should get 100% of the profit if I'm putting in 100% of the work, right? There is one good thing about this, though. The fact of the matter is, somebody else is stealing my magic, right? But that means somebody else can use magic. I'm not alone. Yay. Oh, I was feeling so lonely. But I'm not completely alone on the server. There are other wizards, which we will actively go and seek out. I'm so happy that there are other wizards. Finally. Somebody else on the server. Whoever they are, wherever they are, they didn't get my message, or they didn't respond to my message, or whatever, but I'm going to go and actively seek them out using the ley lines to track down where they took my magic from and when, and from there I can probably be like, oh, it's the desert, it's probably Evan, or oh, it's the jungle, it's probably in the gaming, right? You know, it's likely that if there's magic in the desert, it's probably being used by somebody who lives there, right? So, that's what I'm gonna do. A bunch of boring math stuff you wouldn't want to see on camera. And we can go and finally meet other magic users on the server in the next episode, of course. So I hope you did enjoy. If you did, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, all that YouTuber stuff. And that'll be it for this one. Bowdy!